everybody, Reef Girl here. Welcome to the Tao of Dosing, part two. Part one covered why and when you might want to dose, and part two will cover what and how. When it comes to how to dose, I've done it both ways, manually and also with a dosing pump, which is what I'm showing you here. I use a dosing pump now, and let's talk a little bit about why. I've started using an aquarium management app called Aquarimate that I first saw on Instagram when Inappropriate Reefer was talking about it. It cost around $13.99 Canadian and it's well worth it. You can get it in the app store for any device that you happen to be using. What I liked about it was the analytics. You can print out reports of everything that you're dosing as long as you record your parameters and get a visual of what they actually look like as time goes by. First, let's look at calcium. You'll see on the left hand side, the numbers are wildly up and down. And on the right hand side, they are a lot smoother, although not perfect. On the left was when I was manually dosing and on the right is with the dosing pump. You'll notice there's a spike on the right hand half. That's when I switch to Fritz salt from reef crystals. This is alkalinity. You'll see that there are lots of ups and downs on the left until I started dosing with the dosing pump. And there's that spike again in mid January when I started using the Fritz RPM salt mix. I stopped dosing alkalinity because it was so high. So then of course it dropped way low. It took a while to get back under control, but eventually I got there. And here's magnesium. It was all over the map when I was manually dosing. And then again, you can see that spike with the Fritz salt. These days I have it much more uh, stable. It doesn't spike up and down as much. And that's also evident from looking at these graphs. The reason for showing you these graphs is to show the difference between manual dosing and using a dosing pump. Using a dosing pump definitely keeps things more stable. It's still not perfect and that's where the tweaking comes in. As you take your test measurements and enter them into something like this aquarium management app, you can start to see the trends and this allows you to change your dosing levels as needed to attain that stability. And from my experience, stability is what you get when you use a dosing pump properly to give the right quantities of the various elements to your tank when they're needed, as much as they're needed consistently. There are all types of dosing pumps available on the market today. And I would say, do your research, uh, base your choice on your budget and on what you think of the various features available and how they integrate into your own system the way you have it set up. I happen to use a JBO DP4 and it has worked perfectly for me for the last three years. I love it. It was good value for money and I know that JBO doesn't always get the greatest reviews, but I have never had any reason not to trust them because they've always performed well for me. But you'll make your own choice. There are a ton of manufacturers of various different dosing chemicals out there. When I did my research, I chose Fauna Marin's Balling Light Method because of what I read about the purity of their dosing chemicals. And in the six months I've been using these chemicals, they've proven themselves to be absolutely pure. There isn't even any sludge in the bottom of the alkalinity container. And that was very, very impressive. These dosing containers were included with the balling light kit that I purchased. And there's one for each of the main elements, uh, KH, which is alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. I've drilled holes in the top here, one for the uh, dosing hose to go in, and the other is for vacuum release. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about mixing up the chemicals because I was quite surprised by several things during this process. The instructions say to mix the chemicals into lukewarm RODI water. Well, this RODI water that I have in these three jugs comes directly out of my RODI tub and it is nowhere near lukewarm. It's actually really cold. So I have it in my kitchen sink so that I can run hot water 
uh, under the bottles into the sink and that will gradually bring them up to the temperature that they need to be. Each of these jugs holds four liters and that's roughly the amount of water that the instructions say is required to mix the chemicals. Lukewarm took around 10 or 15 minutes, which is great. It really isn't much time at all. So I'm working with this one container to start with and I have the other two in the other sink sitting in hot water so they stay warm enough. Four liters of water fills the jug right to the top and this leaves no room for adding the chemical salts and then shaking it around to get them mixed. So I'm going to split the volume of the water between two containers and kind of mix them half and half. So the idea here is to mix this entire two kilogram container into the four liters of RODI water. And this is a lot of uh, chemical to go into that small volume of water. So this is gonna be really interesting. This is a very fine powder, so I'm going to be really careful when I scoop it into the funnel that's in the top of the bottle. This whole process took about 10 minutes, and it's because I had no choice but to scoop the powder into the funnel one half cup at a time. I split the volume of powder between these two jugs so that I could mix them evenly. Okay, it's interesting to note that the stuff generates heat. So as I'm shaking it, the bottle feels quite hot. So now I'll start shaking this one. And yeah, it's very, very hot. Interesting. So I'm gonna take the cap off just to release the air <laughs> because I don't want it to blow up or anything. Okay, this cleared almost immediately. It's still warm. I wouldn't say it's as hot as it was before. It was, it, it felt almost too hot to touch by the time I finished shaking it. And this one is still very, very warm. So I'm going to assume there's still chemical reaction going on in there. And so here's the calcium container. And because I'm a waste not want not person, there's still some chemical salts stuck to the outside of the measuring cup that I used. And I want to rinse those off when I pour the water in. So for now, I'm gonna set it up like this. <laughs> okay, before you get all worried, I am not gonna make you sit there and watch me mix chemicals and pour them into bottles. But I thought I would show this part just for maybe a couple hints and tips, because honestly, the very first time I did this, it did not occur to me to try and use a funnel, believe it or not. The Balling Light dosing solutions are supplemented by various trace elements. In the case of calcium, these bottles labeled one and two are added, 25 milliliters of each to the container. And then the container is topped up with RO water to finish it off. And because I bought my Balling Light chemicals in a kit, not only were the dosing containers included, but also these little semi-rigid pieces of pipe that are meant to go into the container to draw up the solution. Next up for mixing is the magnesium. I've already put the powder in and here I'm shaking the bottle to dissolve it. One thing I wanted to note is that although it isn't the same amount of heat as was generated with the calcium, the bottle is still deflecting. So I'm loosening the caps on these as well just to prevent any possible issues. One other thing I'll note is that this stuff is slippery. Um, inevitably, you get a bit on your hands and your skin and this stuff feels really slimy and slippery. And checking back with the calcium, 15 minutes later, the bottle is still very, very hot. So this is something to be careful about. You wouldn't want to put it inside an enclosed space up against other things just in case it transferred heat. This is powerful stuff. And by this point, I'm sure some of you are asking, why didn't she just mix the chemicals directly into the big jugs? And that was because I wanted to be sure they were completely dissolving. And the only way I could be sure of that was to use the transparent jugs. And it worked really well. Another thing I noticed is that though the instructions say to top up the contents of the jug with RO water, there really isn't much space, both for the calcium and the magnesium. And secondly, the magnesium has a distinct odor. It's very, very plasticky. It's not something I noticed with the calcium. And the magnesium is ready to go because no trace elements are added. And finally, we have the carbonate or the KH. 
For this one, the directions are to mix 500 grams, and this is a one kilogram container, so I'm gonna have to measure it. So I got out my trusty postal scale and calibrate it to zero with the measuring cup sitting on top. Then it's just a matter of putting the powder into the cup until it reaches the 500 gram mark. And it's worth pointing out that 500 grams by weight is not equivalent to 500 milliliters by volume. So if you're using a measuring cup like this, you'll have to keep that in mind. The solution for the KH is a little bit different than the others. There will be a residue in the bottom of the container and it mentions this in the instructions. So as I'm pouring it into the big jug, I'm gonna be shaking it to try and get as much of that into the solution as possible. So everything's ready now, but I'm going to leave everything sit for a little while to allow the calcium to cool down. Eventually. The dosing pump is in place on the shelf that's specifically designed for it. Here's the tubing that came in the kit. And so now I'll put everything together, get the pipettes into each container and hooked up to each head on the pump. So I don't need to rely on my memory. Each pump is labeled. Here are three holes drilled in the side of the cabinet, and here's the bracket that will hold the hoses after they're run through those holes. So now everything's neat and tidy and ready to go. I checked each connection on each of the dosing heads to make sure it was all good and tight. And this tubing is a little smaller than the normal silicone stuff that we would use for dosing. This is the stuff that came with the kit and it's very, very sturdy. So now it's time to test each pump and make sure each one is working properly and also get those hoses filled with liquid so it's ready to go the first time the doser deploys. So we're ready to go. I've programmed the doser to deliver five milliliters each time. This is a starting dose because I won't know until I test whether I need more or less to achieve the levels I'm looking for. The doses are calcium at midnight and noon, magnesium at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m., and alkalinity at 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. Separating these doses in time will prevent precipitation that's caused by the elements mixing together in close proximity. This will give them a chance to disperse through the water before the next element is added. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to dosing. I can only try and share what I've learned in the research I've done when trying to figure out what to do in my own system. Those graphs I showed you earlier on ended in the middle of March and it's now in the middle of April. I've seen considerable improvement in the stability of my tank, so I'm going to keep on top of things and make sure that I maintain that. And we'll see where this goes in the next year or so. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.